Hey folks, Jonathan here. All right, we've got the engine out, transmission out. Of course, I dropped the transmission down first and then uh, pulled the engine and then raised the truck up and pulled the transmission out from the side with the tractor. So I've already got it put up and out of the weather out of the way and uh, we'll probably have to get the PTO off of it. Hoping it's gonna work on the other transmission. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, they're both Spicers, one's I don't know. They they made a lot of like it may work. We'll see. Either way, we got to do something with it, so we will end up changing a gear in it or doing whatever we got to do to make it work. All right. So we're hoping everything else is close. Uh, this cross member may or may not have to come out. Uh, it may be easier to change the cross member than it is to try to redrill our bolt because the other one's got a completely different mount system up here, and of course it's all the chicken crap they have to be cleaned off of it, but. I promise you I'm not going to miss working on this thing with all the chicken crap. But it was a pretty pretty big job, but we've got it. Not a not a big issue to do. Uh, it's kind of, it's harder in this winter time for, for all of us to get motivated. As easy as it is when it's not, you know, nasty cold and stuff. So the motivation of getting the work done is what, you know, why we, you know, do it. It's not, uh, it's not that the work's hard. Uh, it's kind of bad when it's chilly and I sort of smashed a finger and uh, it's about it's not better yet but it's getting better uh, it wasn't so bad on this side it was this side it was bad on it swelled up really bad and purple and it's just about went down now so uh, and then of course I've hit it multiple times since then and uh, so we'll still have to get the drive shaft out from the back and the PTO or the pump itself off so we'll have to drain some fluid out first and all that good stuff but anyway so now we're I did use the, that record to pull the engine too and it done a fine job uh, no problems whatsoever with it so far except it seems to use a lot of gas setting an idle uh, more gas than what my forklift would use diesel so I probably should be using my forklift which cubic inches are half too so uh, anyway no I, I got the tractor down here I brought the tools down I hope that I got them you know what I need to get this off uh, get it all apart so here's the crazy thing radiator this is a 42 pound aluminum radiator made by Spectra and the Napa price on that is about two thousand dollars <throat> The Fleet Pride price, price on that's about $900. The Amazon price on it's about $179. And the Cotto price on this radiator was $132. And it's made in Canada. And that Napa price was a Canadian price of $2,000. So I don't know what that is in American money. Uh, don't know. Can't, I don't even remember which way it goes anymore. I mean, I, I, I try not to keep up with anything like that. So anyway uh nice radiator i think it's gonna work out just fine 132 bucks it's 42 pounds so it was 137 for the shipping but how can you complain i mean you're into a radiator for 300 bucks uh brand new aluminum i put an aluminum in my 89 international when you see me use it all the time on the rotations uh i put that radiator on there years ago it was 700 dollars aluminum never had an issue with it none whatsoever so uh, i kind of like them and i like i said i don't like this setup so this one's the short one it's made for that ic front end i'll show you it real quick okay here's the ic front end this is on the four-wheel drive record that i'm working on we're actually going to put the regular hood i've got over onto this i've got a regular uh orange and black hood uh it's not a u-haul hood it's a later model hood but we're going to put it on there and uh we may find another one of these later. It's not an easy front end to find, really. 2002 was the only year, year they made it. I think they actually sold them in 02 and 03. But neat front ends, different. Uh, they, as far as I know, they never made a truck with that front end. Only the IC, IC school buses. So that's why I always wanted to do it. It runs the same headlights, parking lights, as the old style. Uh, the only difference is the grill, and it's lower in the front. So just give us an updated look. Uses the same bumper, but I'm going to have to buy a bumper. I'll probably get a chrome one if I'm going to buy one. So, All right. All right. Here's our uh, 466 that we pulled out. Uh, it's a little dirty back here. 
not bad. You can see somebody's redone the head. It's got a the engine's blue, the head's gray. So the head's been off at one time and redone. Uh, I think uh, I like I like these pumps. Though. So here's your uh, pump for your injector pump for your fuel, and the other ones are on the filter housing, like a like a Duramax, you know, the pump on it, and I don't like them. Uh, but you can pull this bleeder out right here, and then pump it here, and get it bled up as you know close as you can. But this thing fired up really good and run really good even after sitting for years. So, and I don't even know. You know, I probably should have looked at it, but this should be marked horsepower and which engine this is. Let me clean this tag off and we'll look at it. All right, folks. So here's what we got. This is not an 88 model engine, even though the truck's an 88. This is a looks like an 85, 84, 85, which I don't have a problem with. Uh, and our horsepower, it's not the top of the photon pole, but it ain't at the bottom either. 180 horsepower. Could be up to 210. Uh, could be down to 165. We'll see how she does. I mean, we can turn the pump up if we needed to, but you know, I'd rather just leave it like it is. If it runs good and drives good and not, you know, not the slowest thing on earth, then I'm going to be happy either way. I'm sure there's a lot of differences because uh, now we're dealing with an engine that's 10, 11 years older, so uh, we will see. Uh, this is a pull clutch. I don't know if, when you get into the bigger trucks, a lot of people may not have dealt with this stuff, but uh, the throwout bearing, the fork goes in behind it and it actually pulls it out to release it. And it's, you know, engaged now. So um, that's the only difference. And all you really need to do is unhook your linkage and turn it all the way. And you actually turn the fork up and away from here. You can see where it grabs right down in here. But it will actually turn it up and away and you can pull it out without unhooking anything. Just like you would a regular one. Um, the difference is, is the throttle bearing is, or release bearing is always going to stay on the... Uh, on the pressure plate so uh kind of easy but it's a long trip when you start right here and you put it into the transmission or in all the way into the clutch and back of the motor it's a long trip to get it in there so when you're uh, working under the truck trying to push your transmission in it's a long ways to push it but yeah that's it and uh what we need to do now is get the other one out and then we can learn a whole lot more about it I need to add one more thing too because I had somebody say something about uh, asking if this was illegal to do to actually put an old model engine in uh, a newer model truck and one thing about this truck and the other truck neither one of them were had emissions on them at all there's a man I think in Michigan with a record service that uh, he paid somebody to, to do some deleting on the uh, on somebody's trucks and I'm sure it was a deaf or whatever you know this newer stuff but uh, anyway, he's in prison for two years, and he had, he wasn't the one that done it. He's paid somebody to do it. So the other guy's still got to be charged. They've got a bunch of other people that they've got charged. I think eBay, they were fighting over with eBay about uh, uh, some kits that they were selling or somebody was selling on there. I don't think, you know, the platform had anything to do with it. I mean, uh, but anyway, so I will not cut a, cut a cattling birder off. Uh, I don't want to. I just don't want to mess with none of it. I just, you know, if you just stay away from it, and stay out of it. Uh, you won't have to worry about about them coming knocking on your door. And they're looking for people to use to set examples. And I'm not going to be one of their examples. So we're going to stick with the old stuff that was pre-emissions. There's no emissions on it. I'm not changing no emissions. I'm not taking any off. I'm not adding any to it. But I'm definitely not taking any off. Uh, we're not altering anything in any way. Uh, we'll probably go back exactly with a good muffler and quiet and because I you know I'm not even into the noise part of it so uh, we don't need to blow smoke or roll coal or whatever you want to call it we just need to get to the wrecks get the cars picked up get the road cleaned up turn around and get back that's it all right all right we got the radiator out and hanging here in front of me uh, big harmonic bouncer on that thing but uh, that thing's about 12 inch diameter but the uh, the mounts, of course, I said were different. The other one mounts in the center. And I can see the holes in the center that look just like the mount. So uh, maybe it'll still bolt to it. My main thing is I'm going to have to check the height from here to there and make sure that it's the same. 
and uh, if it is we can use it like it is if not we might have to change the uh, cross member out or raise it or lower it or whatever I had to do all that with the uh, TT466 I put in the top kick and make the back brackets to get the height what I wanted on it so we're pretty good in here though there's plenty of height uh, plenty of room to grab it with the chain and get it out so we'll keep at it and see what happens all right all right folks so here's what the truck looks like with the front end uh, a bumper not a new bumper a used bumper I found for $150 on marketplace needs a little clean up got some scratches and some scuffs but never seen a bumper that was a quarter inch thick this thing is heavy and one man it's all you want to do to just carry it so uh, got really lucky on that bumper a new chrome one time it was here was six to seven hundred dollars and I can live with the one that's on it so we put new bezels new lights uh, got all that done the bezels I bought this time were chrome I've never bought chrome ones I bought all the originals but maybe they'll be alright but anyway we got to figure out what we're going to do on paint and color and all that stuff yet anyway so uh, let me see right now I'm working on a few things I'll show you so engines in and all that's done of course and I'll show you some of our I'll show you some of our clearance work here so everything here was lowered down uh, about three and three quarters of an inch I believe is what I've done I cut everything recut everything just like it was cut and kind of hard to do because it was in the truck and I was doing it with a sawzall but I uh, didn't have no more cut off wheels I ran out so I just had to use what I had uh, both sides are low and then the radiators of course a lot lower and of course I've still got uh, at least an inch between it and the hose I still want to do a uh, we're gonna do a shroud yet have not done that yet uh, just got it water in it antifreeze in it uh, everything's hooked up the bracket for the oh, you'll see this in a minute it's not shaking no more there's two bolts missing it all needs cleaned up and fresher washed I didn't fresher wash the engine before I put it in uh, I did before I pulled it out of the other truck but uh, just time and the cold weather was one of those things I didn't want to be pressure washing you know 30 degrees out so uh, a couple little things I got a ground to hook up here going to the alternator them wires there are ones for the temperature sending unit which we're not using we're using a mechanical gauge and ones for the air conditioning so we'll end up using the air conditioning one later uh, lowered everything this down also this whole side here got lowered down and uh, everything is looking good uh, in good shape we used the original air cleaner for this truck I did some modifying and used the line or the hose the intake for the other one so we're not running an intercooler on this one uh, like I said I'm not worried about horsepower I'm not racing anywhere this is flat land out here too and we're not hitting no big hills or nothing like that so it'll do just just fine for what I want and uh, everything else let me see alternator that was on the other engine which came out of this truck was no good it had a post that was burned off of it so this is the 88 model alternator it's a big alternator but seems to be charging good uh, I had to do a little work on the exhaust that flange on that pipe off of the chickens uh, manure spreader was rusted so I took the flange off the original pipe which went straight down instead of this way and I just cut it and welded it on and then we ran the muffler for the original truck the muffler for the there's the one for the chicken chicken crap spreader so where we're at now we're still loaded with uh, tires and wood but uh, I haven't took the tires and stuff off yet because I really haven't needed them but so what we've got here is a mess as you can see this all come out of here and this is the cab filter I think it needed replaced I'm not sure but so the cab filter slides in here so I had to take everything down and clean everything uh, I was going to change the heater core okay so the heater core I bought for this thing uh, is the most common one I guess and it was like you can get them between 70 and 90 dollars uh, bought it got it here thought it was right well I didn't take the cover and stuff off so it wasn't right this heater core minimum I finally found a, a new old stock one for 350 and the besides that I'm going to go all the way up to $850 for a heater core and of course it's copper it's not the new aluminum stuff so uh, I 
decided to take the heater core out and solder everything up. It had three cracks in it. There were three cracks, and actually that's, let me see, that's one of them right there. So there was three cracks in the uh, pipes that where this thing had froze. And that's what happened, it froze and it just expanded them until they cracked. So there's two on this side, one on the other. I had to do a lot more work on the other end to be able to get to the crack, but I thought it was worth the time and trouble. Uh, like I said, minimum of 350 and another 20 or $30 shipping. So I just decided not to do it. I want to heat, I want heat for sure, but I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And uh, sometimes you just gotta, you know, Put your foot down and say, you know, it's not worth the time and trouble to, to be buying something like that. So everything's soldered up on this one. I've been running it. Uh, the temperature's up on the, the, well, it's not up great, but I'll show you what the temperature's at. Now we're gonna get all this cleaned up and get a, a new cabin filter back in it. And, uh, done all the, I still gotta change the oil and do the filters on this for the oil, but I've got a new uh, water coolant filter, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, that's on it. We got plenty of antifreeze in it. Uh, we've got two new fuel filters on it and we've got our, our fuel lines done, got our throttle hooked up. Uh, there was some differences for sure between this engine. I learned a lot about them. I learned that that engine is nothing like this one. There's nothing the same as this engine. Uh, that is an electronic engine with a manual pump on it. And I don't know how many they've done but it wasn't a lot of them. So uh, wasn't nearly as many as what they built of these. So we ran into some things. I had to move the cross member in the front because of the length of the engine. I actually had to move it this way about an inch, forward about an inch. I had to machine the inside of the flywheel and I'll show you that. So here is both flywheels. This flywheel here is off of the, the 466, the early one, the old one. Here is the one that came off of the, the new model, the electronic motor. And as you can see, you can see these uh, heat cracks in it. And there's a little bit of wear, but you can see the bolt pattern is way different than this one. So this one had a lot of heat cracks too, even worse. And it's really, it's almost, a, it's at least a sixteenth of an inch down. And I decided because the heat crack looked like they were so deep that I did not want to turn this. So I bought a new flywheel. The first thing I had to do when I bought it though, this bearing and this bearing are different sizes. Now you can get this flywheel with this smaller hole for the five speed transmission. But you cannot get this flywheel with that size hole for the seven speed transmission. So the first thing I had to do was machine out the new one to fit the big bearing. So we done that first. So it would fit this, or well this bearing would fit in it. And then uh, that was the only thing I had to change to put the five speed in, or the, I'm sorry, the seven speed in instead of the five speed. So the seven speed takes a uh, 30 millimeter center bearing and the five speed takes a 25 millimeter uh, center and what you run into is you can order a bearing that is uh, 30 millimeter ID that fits this OD but I figured it up and by the time I was done I had less than 10 millimeter around the sides so the size of the balls would have had to have been really small also it was a special order bearing uh, a little more expensive but the worst part is, is uh, if you had a problem with this thing and you needed to do something, you know, to, to get it fixed pretty quick, you are going to have to special order another bearing. The way that I've done it was boring it out to this side, so you just go on with your uh, off-the-shelf bearing for a 7-speed Spicer, your 6 plus 1, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, the other thing, too, I learned about a lot about them transmissions. I got the covers back on. I made a mess on the floor. I got a lot of diesel in there when I was working on the lines and priming this thing up and uh, well you can see the temperature is about uh, 120 130 so it's not real warm but ran it a little bit okay the transmission as you can see it's uh, a six plus one which has got a low and then six gears and the reason the L is on there and not a one for first is that particular gear is not synchronized so you need to be at a complete stop to go into low gear now two different Spicer of this series, the 6 plus 1. One's an overdrive, one's a direct drive in 6 gear. This transmission, of course, I'm the unlucky one on this. This ended up being a direct drive. So this is not an overdrive transmission. They did make one. This just is not it. So let's start it up. Okay, so we we're manual, so we got a, a pull lever to shut it off. So you can see the oil pressure. 
road. Oh, give it some throttle here. Now we do not have a tack working. The speedometer does work. The, as you can see, this does work. It's not showing right, but if you check it with the meter, it's showing 13.8. I don't trust these international gauges at all. That's why I've got a uh, mechanical uh, water temperature. Now this is a mechanical gauge. It's not an electric like a lot of them. I've got to figure out what's wrong with the with the uh, gas gauge or the diesel gauge. I don't I don't like that at all. But anyway. Good to go there. I'm working on actually having heat, but I gotta get the covers back on it. And you just gotta that's where we're at with this thing. And uh let me see, bought a bed. I wasn't gonna buy a bed, but uh I decided to go ahead and buy one that needed a lot of work, so we're going to be doing a lot of work on it. It's a 21 foot Jerdan. Uh, it's been in a wreck. It was on a truck just like this one with the 22 five wheels, uh, and it was in a bad wreck. It hit hard on the, the front, about here. On the, I think it got hit by like four trains at one time, fully loaded, and about a, 200 cars behind each one of them because it really bent the frame around on it, and which you will see when I get it here. And you know, it's we're we're basically going to rebuild the bed, and it does have a good wheel lift and stuff on it. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's still a lot less work than than uh, building one. The steel that was I put on my roll, you know, the the international rollback I built, the one I use all the time. The steel I bought that was uh, a 20 foot by 8 foot piece, thir uh, three sixteenths, and that piece was 708 dollars when I bought it, and it was about two or three hundred dollars more expensive than buying it in sheets but you didn't have to weld it together and i wanted one full sheet and so i bought that sheet and then the last time i checked it was nineteen hundred and four dollars and i'll probably check again maybe today just to see and but i'm sure the price is well over two thousand dollars probably closer to three thousand dollars for that one sheet of steel so that's why i went and bought this bed i've got this all right folks we're uh not done with the truck but we're pretty done with the truck uh, besides the paint, I don't know what we're going to do yet on the paint. Uh, I'm going to put a new set of tires on it, but I don't know what size I'm going to run yet. I was going to run the 255 70 22.5s, which is the lowest thing that you can get in a 22.5, but I may not have to do that, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. But I went and picked up the bed I'm going to put on it. So, next thing on this will be to move the rear end forward, we're going to shorten it up to the correct length which from cab to back of the cab to axle I don't remember what it was 150 inches I think or something like that pretty long because if we're running a 21 foot bed so I went and picked it up and as you can see these frame rails bent over very bad and this is a basket case this is rough but this is a two-ton pretty much like the one I'm working on uh, so that's the reason I may not have changed tire size because this bed where most of them go back eight foot this goes back ten foot uh, with the cylinder I that's what I'd actually done was check it and measured it uh, there was some rust on it we're gonna go through and do some patching and some fixing on it I'm not a rust kind of person but that's okay uh, we are not using any of this bracketry we're gonna use these cylinders but what I'll do is put them up there redo this cross member get cylinders where I need them and then I'm gonna completely change how it's mounted so somebody mounted this bed on here and uh, they was running it I guess when it crashed but they done a pretty crappy job uh, let me see uh, one thing I want to show you is this has a actually a dump truck PTO on it there is a control valve on this side to actually put pressure and dump so it's a good pump but there's no reason why this pump should be on this truck uh, so we won't be running that pump of course we're running a hopefully a direct pump to the right to the PTO anyway but uh, let me see let me get on the other side here and I'll see how bad that frame is okay so you can see how bad it's hit so it got hit on the front 
of the truck or at the side of the truck driver's side uh, and knocked around and it must have got hit by something really hard I mean a train or, or something because it it really bent it around bad and it bent it under the bed some too and like I said somebody has done a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work on this this bed and stuff that wasn't done proper you see we, we got a bend here and that would have been from the cab hitting and there was also I think a car on it because this has been in that way and the fairly roller has broke off the winch I'm not a big fan of planetary winches either so I may change that winch out to a worm gear winch that I've got it broke the PTO off of the engine and that was a 2000 model PTO so they must have built this truck uh, not that darn long ago but uh so this is a Jerodan. Uh it does have a wheel lift it's missing one wheel lift grid uh, I was thinking on replacing the sides but I think what I'll do is I think we'll fix these and we got a bow in it also I don't know if we're going to be able to get see that bow but there's a bow back there uh, that we're going to have to fix and then some sides we'll have to fix and this center section from here back to here which basically consists of two pieces uh, about six foot long and eight foot wide well four foot wide each make eight foot wide them pieces have been replaced and they're not thick enough uh, so I've got steel to go back in there uh, the back of the bed is really nice the surface up to this weld and the front of the bed is really nice and the surface up till this weld and I don't know what happened here but it could have been rust or something but this is really thin it's not even thick enough and you can see it's got a few little holes in it so this will get cut out so basically what we're going to do is we're going to slide this bed completely off this tilt frame we're going to get this tilt frame mounted on the truck you know with the wheel lift in the back half we're going to get all the hydraulics figured out all of them straightened out and we'll redo the bed flip it over do whatever we have to do to the head eight bar to get it right because I think it's meant some too possibly and uh, it's twisted I can see that and uh, go ahead and and get just get you know get everything mounted on the truck and then we'll slide the bed on uh, so it's gonna be a lot of work I think I want to video this I want to I'm gonna do it from tear down to, to putting back together so we're just gonna dissect it and take it apart just like I would you know normally would and then uh, go back together with it uh, there's some rails that definitely need, gonna need replaced in there so we'll flip this thing over and see if we can get it all straight and everything but like I said the bed will be the last thing we do the uh, tilt frame is gonna be the first uh, somebody has made these but they've done a good job uh, this must have been their distance between let me see the bed yeah they would have rolled up and hit so this will give us an idea of where we need to go with the length and then we will uh, we can move the bed forward and back on the pins also but with this going back 10 foot and it having 22.5 tires on it and these are not low profile tires it's 295 75s it don't have a bad loading angle right here where it's at so I don't think the loading angle is going to be too bad on this truck to tell you the reason that I'm I'm wanting to keep the tall tires is because that's not an overdrive transmission first and second the rear ends probably geared pretty low anyway and if you start lowering tire size you start getting rpms up on the engine now I don't need to go that fast but I don't need my rpms to be running high uh, the longer the slower it runs the longer it'll last so we will uh we will figure that out I think maybe I can get by with the big tires if so that's that's not a problem it'll last longer tires last longer when they don't have to turn as many turns uh, looks like we'll probably just come in here and slice that slice it back and slice it down and across yeah yeah we can take that off and sit it right back over on the other truck somebody has even made these pieces where it looks like there might have been some rust so we'll clean all that up and make them nicer uh, we've got some levers on the other side broke we got some levers here that ain't there's no way they would work where they're adjusted at so there's rust on top of that so we'll probably knock it off 
yeah you can see all that rust so it's been repaired I can see welds on it so yeah we'll just go through and redo it and do it the way I want uh, and like I said the, the bed the steel is just so expensive now that I think I can come out a little better doing this than than replacing everything so uh, we'll do videos on this as we go build the entire thing and like I said that frame is shot it hit it hard I'll show you the PTO so I didn't get a PTO shaft but I did get the PTO that was that was with it and as you can see it's busted it pretty much ripped it off the transmission but this is a TG series Muncie so you know I don't know if this is the same if, if it was running the same transmission I've got or not but just to buy a, a TG case and replace the case uh, if it's the right gear that'll work uh, the PTO I've got for this thing is actually a uh, a Muncie PTO that I've got I'm hoping is going to fit that truck but I'm not even sure that it's going to fit it but there's always a chance this might fit it if this fits it then we can uh, we can find a case I'm uh, turning all the way through now all right yeah we could definitely fix that I'm a I'm a blue PTO man so the blue ones are Muncie's you can see TG6 so it's a TG series uh, definitely like the Muncie's but I want to run the pump that's, that's directly mounted to the PTO on this other one so hopefully the other one will work side here's a bend a little here but it's pretty straight it's not like the other side so I think that this rear ends exactly the same too this one's got uh, the same lugs uh, bud wheel with uh, single speed and it has the same drive shaft set up so I think that's an, an extra rear end for the truck and that we can save and uh, it's always nice to have parts it's double frame same as mine so anyway that's what we're gonna do uh, the reason I do this is if I if I take a I'm gonna sell one of my rollbacks and replace it with this and the thing is, is if I take the bed off that rollback, I devalue it by probably $8,000 compared to what I can get out of it, compared to what it's worth as a cabin chassis. So I would basically be buying a bed from myself for $8,000 off of one of my other trucks. And I don't want to do that. I could sell it and get the $8,000 plus whatever the cabin chassis is and, and make enough money that I can easily have this bed for way less money. Uh, because you know there's no way I could put eight thousand dollars in this bed I mean I could I guess but you know I'd have to work at it off a of hard but, uh, but yeah we can get this one straightened out and the way we want it anyway but anyway appreciate everybody watching and stay tuned because I'm gonna do videos on this whole entire deal all right appreciate it bye